right, we're back here in the J Concepts Garage with another vlog episode. We're here with Fred Reap. Uh, we're here discussing the most recent uh, event that you uh, made a trip to, which is the Solid Axle Showdown. Uh, Fred, talk to us a little bit about the event itself and uh, how things went up there, and, you know, the trip in general and, uh, you know, how things went. Yeah, the 2018 Solid Axle Showdown, Richmond, Virginia, put on by uh, Marlon Cox and his brother Raphael. Did a super job. Um, you know, it's one of the events to uh, be at, you know, for the uh, the RC Monster Trucks during the year. You know, they do a really good job. A lot of trucks in attendance and a lot of competition. Yeah, I mean, there's a, you know, there's a ton of classes there. Um, and you guys raced everything. You know, we got a couple trucks that you brought back with us. Yeah. Uh, we did some retro. We did, uh, they dabbled in a little mega truck mm -hmm. this year. Uh, and of course, the Pro Mod, which is everyone's favorite. Uh, usually gets the biggest turnout right and uh, then did a nice show and shine to start and mm -hmm. uh, it's a really kind of a big event yeah big event you know everything you know starts off with the show and shine uh, retro we have a uh, Moe's turbo lover truck here he took the uh, number one spot in that thing and uh, just looking at this truck here man he's got some lots of goodies in this truck and uh, it performed really really well yeah, I mean, it's like the the retro class is one that I I've liked so far since uh, that I've been racing with it, and uh, it's one where it seems to be it's hard to pick a real clear cut favorite at these events because yeah. the courses themselves are a little treacherous uh, with you know how they build the, the the mud pits and how you how they construct the course. I mean, it it can make a a, a good driver a little crazy with you know hitting these things and. Uh, not making it through the the mud pit and and uh tell us a little bit about racing in the retro class and and uh you know the the trucks themselves and you yeah know, i mean how the, the course they had set up there was really treacherous this year and uh yeah i mean it, it kept you on your toes you know just one simple little bump or you know you're coming down off of a, a particular obstacle you get a bad bounce it misaligned you for the next obstacle so it's got to slow you down just uh it was on cue for mo and uh, he was able to take the win yeah it's uh there was a, a good bracket uh format you guys had there mm -hmm. uh you ran what the is you know kind of the uh the c b a system bracket explain right. uh how that system worked with the qualifying and and, and how that kind of worked out yeah that typical that type of a bracket system kind of came up with a, a while ago to do the uh, Diggers Dungeons event, those guys kind of accepted it and uh, and like it. Um, you know, you qualify, uh, the top 15 make a bracket, and uh, you'll have your bracket set up kind of like off road, just to handle the amount of numbers mm -hmm. to get the event done. You have to kind of bracket them that way. So you know, if somebody had dropped in, you know, they can make it. You know, from the D main, say, for an example, and actually make it up into the A main to possibly take a win. Mm -hmm. So in this situation, Mo did qualify in the A bracket, right. and then he ended up winning out into the finals and winning the overall, right? Right. And we had uh, Matt Stoltz, who ran so well throughout the whole weekend, uh, but uh, I know that he was... Uh, running in there and, and you know, he was one of the guys that bumped up I believe uh, I saw him mention on Facebook that he bumped up from the B into the A bracket. Yeah that's what's kind of nice about the bracket and the bumping up you know if you kind of have a bad run you don't necessarily count yourself out but you really need to you know have your act together in order to make that advancement because it's just so hard to make make things happen. Yeah so in the final we had Mo with the turbo lever and then we had Mikey that ran like his uh, Bigfoot looking truck um, and uh it looked like uh, Mikey's truck was a little, like he had more plastic parts on it with the, the, the Traxxas Bigfoot 1 body. And then right. obviously this uh, truck here, uh, rocking the Firestorm tires and the, the 88 Chevy body, mm -hmm. um, had a has a, you know, sort of a retro look to it. But, you know, Mo's got some aluminum cases and ladder bars on here. Mm -hmm. Uh, which you don't have to have, but it makes right. the truck look really nice, right? Yeah, it makes it look, uh, you know, really nice. And it's actually putting a little weight to kind of where you need it down on the axles and get actually, you know, we talk about suspensions and tire setup here where we're finding these retros is, you know, instead of running foams and tires, you know, to help the suspension because there's just so little weight up in the chassis where the tires are absorbing a lot of this, uh, the shock, where mm -hmm. the, the shock absorbers may not be able to, uh, to take that sort of uh, reaction. So he's got a little bit more weight 
as far as the axles over at the tires so it's actually giving a little more cushion in the tires not to necessarily say that that's the case on how he won i mean he just drove a really good race it was a very very difficult course i had the luxury of running it i know rich here he had the luxury of running it and did quite well i mean yep. you just you just got to get that good pass and you got to run your own race you can't really worry about the other guy mm-hmm. and you know when you watch uh, mo's race it was kind of exciting because he he almost went into that last pit mm-hmm. um behind but he was able to jump out uh, kind of a you know a, a nice maneuver jumping out of the pit onto the finish line and, and getting the win there yeah kind of the high risk maneuver it's like you got to pull the trigger in order to win at that point yeah and these trucks are all fairly equal uh you know they they try to to make them where they're fairly equal right. uh, there are a lot of clodbuster based trucks mm-hmm. right yeah all mostly clodbuster based uh clodbuster based trucks um you know again the it's nice you can either take the the stock truck itself and do a little tweaking on it or you can go here with mo and he put a little extra finesse into it again that's not necessarily why he won but you know again you got to run a really good race in retro yeah i mean in, in in all reality when i see this um a lot of people take a lot of pride in building these mm-hmm. trucks so half of or maybe you know three quarters of the fun is actually getting there with your truck built the way that you like it right right yeah it's kind of the uh you know the showing off it's like my truck's better than yours almost but Mm -hmm. uh yeah it's just a lot of guys you know take a lot of uh, money and a lot of pride in building these machines and they like to show them off so moving into the 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 big pro mod class uh we mentioned earlier matt stoltz uh, he was the top qualifier in pro mod but like you said we had the bracket system Mm -hmm. they bracketed up and then we got down into the finals and uh, russ bryant who won last year Mm -hmm. and um and he won again this year yeah got to take the win again you know not leaving anything on the table for matt stoltz he did top qualify in uh pro mod and Mm 2.2 he really had his game on and just you know just wasn't in the uh formula for him to take the win but you know russ he's always super consistent he races these things we've talked in videos in the past Mm -hmm. he's always running these trucks and you know the practice makes perfect yeah, he's very good with them, and you mm-hmm. can see in the finals, uh, you know, Matt ran them close. Uh, they came in that final turn; they were really tight, and uh, that's like where you mentioned earlier that you you have to run your own race. Right. And you start looking at that other truck, and pretty soon you really lose track of where you're at. Yeah, just if your eyes glance just to see where somebody is, you already lost a tenth of a second. Yeah, and you and that's what's different about this is mm-hmm. you for some reason when I'm racing. Uh, in off-road i'm not necessarily really worried about or pay attention to the other cars as much but for some reason in this you you do want to see what's going on with that other vehicle but it really distracts from what you're doing yeah i kind of have that habit where i need to break and run in these things i kind of use peripheral vision when i'm Mm -hmm. racing i mean i used to do it in off-road kind of just you kind of have to know where things are around the track you're Mm -hmm. coming up you have three cars in a lane you know you got to kind of know where they are so you can make pick your line to go monster trucks you're really focused on your own race but again i like to just kind of know where is that but it it will cost you yeah and and that's the difficult part and obviously something that russ is really good at Mm -hmm. uh, running a lot and uh, focusing in on his truck and he ran a great race there kind of wheelied across the finish line Mm -hmm. uh dragging that uh almost like an artificial surface you guys were racing on right uh dragging that through the tailgate and uh they did a little freestyle there afterwards just having fun the surface is super cool it's like a synthetic astro turf Mm -hmm. um this was a newer type surface than what they ran last year they were outside uh the newer surface seemed a little more slick people were kind of chasing tires a little bit either Mm -hmm. going to the blues or the golds and the uh, renegade tires and pro mod but uh yeah he did awesome and then uh, looking into the 2.2 class, you mentioned earlier, Matt was the top qualifier there. But TQ. Yeah. Yep. And then uh, getting into racing, we had Sonny and uh, kind of took over and took a great win there. Um, him and his dad, I think, went 1-2. And then Russ uh, got the third position in 2.2. Yeah, it was kind of a great little story there with uh, Ronnie Santucci and Sonny going head-to-head in the finals. Mm-hmm. It was really kind of super sweet. You know, the family really gets into it. Everybody in the family is kind of involved in the in the race program that they have so it was kind of a sweet victory for them yeah he had a great looking truck was using the uh the midwest wheels and the rangers tires right and uh in the 2.2 class and 
uh, you know, they mentioned that the tires worked really well for them. Yeah, the tires are, you know, super awesome. They're super hooked up. I mean, Russ is running them. You know, he's either going to be in one of those uh, one, two, or three spots. So you can yep. pretty much guarantee it. And they're running the tires, and they look great. It gives the truck a nice scale look to that maybe a 48 scale tire type look as a you know, as opposed to the 66 yeah. tall tire. Yeah, I mean, really what we're what we're doing there is we're concentrating on Pro Mod, right. Retro, mm -hmm. we got the 2.2, right. and then uh, something that they incorporated this year is sort of a fun aspect as we did a little mega truck, right? Yeah, with the, all the hype of the mega trucks, you know, Dennis Anderson and I, we kind of did a little hint with the, the King Sling, and uh, ever since that, you know, it's kind of uh, blown up on everybody. Everybody wants to get into the mega trucks. Mm -hmm. um, you know, they kind of set up a pit. You know, the guys there were really excited and, uh, you know, they wanted to put on a little uh, ex exhibition run with the uh, the uh, mega trucks and uh, it was really cool. And again, Russ doing a super job taking the win in that and uh, just exhibition run, but it's nice to take a win. Yeah, absolutely. I mean, uh, we take a look at the video, uh, you know, we they set up the mud, which is uh, basically packaging peanuts, right? right? Which, you know, it seems a little silly to somebody that hasn't cleaned one of these trucks. Mm -hmm. uh, but as soon as you've actually run one of these trucks in the mud, and then you take it home and you want to clean it, I mean, you did this earlier, a few months ago. Right. I mean, the thing is stripped down to screws. Yeah, you have to take it all the way down to screws, otherwise things start seizing up uh, the corrosion you know, starts taking over almost instantly if you're just not in there dismantling yeah. and, and getting it down to pieces. There's nothing cooler than running in the mud when mm -hmm. you're doing it, but when you got to clean up one of these trucks later, um, it's a big job. So something they did since they're running on the uh, you know artificial surface anyway, they built the little box, right? Put the the peanuts in there, put mm -hmm. a couple obstacles, yeah, and made a turn at the end and come back. So you had to make two passes, right? Uh, through it, so it was actually a course, uh, which I thought was really cool i didn't know they were going to do the turn and come back through mm -hmm. uh so i could see a lot of people doing that um in the future and honestly it, you could actually do it side by side too yeah you can yeah i think they have uh plans to build another pit and yep. uh yeah it will be cool side by side yeah and if you see the video you know with uh russ doing the pit you know we get you know the peanuts are throwing all over mm -hmm. the place and uh, popping out do his turn and come back through and you know throwing more peanuts but it's a nicer cleanup Obviously, we were able to get the truck, bring it back here with us. Mm -hmm. There's not any dirt nice on it. And clean. It's still nice and clean, mm -hmm. and uh, uh, he got a race out of it. Yeah. So nice. Uh, you know, the way he had this thing built up is he obviously put the Snoop nose. Uh, he went with the ZRP Racing wrap on here, uh, just kind of promoting some of his, his uh, friends and sponsors. Yeah, it was actually his 2.2 truck, and that's kind of what's nice with our uh, tire and wheel package is where you can take these trucks and just swap tires and wheels and you can have a whole different machine i mean yeah. you can show up with one truck and run three different classes potentially yeah with uh, a single chassis then we went with the fling king tires on here and the dragon wheels mm -hmm. and i mean it's just like you said just throw it right on the, the the same truck and you're running multiple classes yeah go have some fun another thing that was kind of cool you know we kind of you know, talked about a lot of the winners there and the guys uh, doing really well. As we had, uh, you know, we did some video while you were there. We mm -hmm. talked to uh, Matt Hall uh, that built a couple one-off trucks for mm -hmm. the event. And uh, I mean, we had the Barefoot, we got the uh, the Rolling Vengeance. Right. Uh, I mean, you had the chance to talk to them. Um, obviously, we did a video showing the interview with the guys, but. Um, you know, aside from that, um, you know, looking at those trucks, what did you think of the, the builds and the things that they had there? Yeah, the guys are really getting creative, and it's really nice to see. It's just not like a cookie-cutter, you know, hobby to where you just go buy a kit, assemble it, and go. These guys are actually going the extra mile. They're thinking, man, I like this truck back in the early 90s and had such a, such a chassis, and this is the type of engine it had in it, and this is the type of body. And they're actually, you know, they're trying to replicate these things. And mm -hmm. Matthew Hall, he was just... You know, somehow caught wind that we were going to do the Snoop Nose body. He's like, I got to have it, and mm -hmm. I want to build this truck, and I want it to go perfect with the body. Mm -hmm. So kind of got on the body, and then Josh Zimmerman with the Freestyle RC was able to work his magic and mm -hmm. draw up a chassis for him. 
Yeah, and it came out really nice, you know, like we talked about in the in the video, but the front four link setup, mm -hmm. you know, it's long travel. Uh, he's got the, the really nice looking axles on it. I mean, it's just a nice looking truck and the paint job came out really nice too. Yeah, the paint job looks great and just go in the extra detail, putting the driver inside mm -hmm. and the engine and just making the whole package. Yeah, it's a little Fred in there <laughs> uh, driving it. And uh, yeah, it looked nice. I mean, it's stuff that you don't mm -hmm. necessarily see all the time that you know that people are bringing out yeah and then we got the rolling vengeance which is kind of funny because i've actually never seen the movie uh but um while that race was going on i saw the truck and i was like all right i'm gonna go on youtube and check out what's going on with this movie and um so you know it's a little tough to take uh yeah. it's a it's a 80s you know b movie at mm -hmm. best uh but it was cool that there was a monster truck in it and yeah. it was custom built by mike welch mike right welch yeah so who's built, I don't know, seems like a hundred trucks over his career, but built this one for the movie that uh, the guy wanted to get some revenge, I guess, on his, some bad guys. And um, You'd know more than me because I haven't had a chance to sit down and So, yeah, watch essentially the that's what happens is uh, I think he got some revenge on the, on the bad guys in the movie with this monster truck, but... Um, you know, so then in another replica build of this of this truck. Another right? replica, and again, it's kind of like a retro type chassis. Mm -hmm. I guess he could run it. I'm mean, a little hesitant because all mm -hmm. 3D printed parts, but I guess you could always make some more parts. But yeah, it was a really good representation of what was in the film, and uh, it's really cool. Again, these guys thinking a little bit outside of the box and making mm -hmm. some really cool projects. Yeah, movie trucks. You know, yeah. it's a, just a little bit of everything. You know, you got Mo here uh, giving a shout out to. Uh, Judas Priest mm -hmm. uh, with the Turbo Lover, which is, I don't know if we have a um, music, too many music inspired trucks or rock and roll inspired trucks, whatever you want to call it, but uh, it's kind of a neat theme he's got. Yeah, here. and then he had the uh, the Beetlejuice mm -hmm. for the uh, Pro Mod, which was really cool. Again, you know, we were kind of chatting in the video earlier. It's like a monster truck is kind of all of the character in itself, and it's mm -hmm. kind of neat that some of the identities. They're not just copying a cookie cutter monster truck that's already built to kind of you know develop in, in their own mind their own creation which makes it super cool yeah so um moving forward here you guys travel back uh you know we we did a nice action video with the interviews we're going to do the vlog here talk mm -hmm. about you know the trucks we were able to bring into studio but uh, we got some other things coming up tell us about your your next upcoming trip um you know what you got coming up on the schedule yeah the j concepts monster cross mo and matt they're putting that all together we've sent them a whole bunch of crushed car bodies and uh they're painting with gallons of paint to make that thing go it's going to be more of a off-road type course mm -hmm. integrated into monster trucks so you'll be uh, rubbing tires it's going to be pretty interesting i haven't really run a type of an event like that but uh they've have in the early 90s and it was uh, pretty popular for them so we're looking forward to that yeah i mean we we've talked to them a little bit about it obviously you're making the trip there mm -hmm. uh to pennsylvania to run and uh we're gonna be able to run everything there right yeah run everything mega trucks they're gonna have some retros we're gonna have the stage four truck i'm kind mm -hmm. of excited and always partial to that thing it's mm -hmm. really neat to see what that machine can do uh, you know, the pro mods, I'm calling them stage two and threes, mm -hmm. you know, to kind of follow the real identities of the, the larger monster trucks. But, uh, yeah, they're going to have it all and uh, the promise to deliver on the fun. Yeah, I, it's obviously a little bit of different of a format, like you said. Right. Uh, more of a off-road where you're going to do laps, mm -hmm. laps in time. and But you're still going to have cars, things to crush. And you're just going to be a Hills, little more side, yeah. mm -hmm. little more side to side. Yeah, a little more side to side. You know, you're gonna well, once these things tangle. I mean, on an off road, you can uh, kind of bump them, uh, rub fenders a little bit. And these things here, these big rolling tires, once they start grabbing one another, it's going to be some uh, chaos. But uh, I'm sure everybody's going to drive them, and uh, it should be some good racing. So, and then um, obviously you come back, regroup again, regroup again, end of May. Uh, you got uh, which one of the biggest events of the year, typically, uh, going over to the Digger's Dungeon. Um, you're going to be involved in the um, the mega truck portion with Dennis. Yeah. Uh, tell us uh, kind of the promotion on that and uh, what to look forward to at the dungeon. Yeah, No Limit RC, putting on the RC Monster Truck World Finals up there. I'm going to come up and uh, help Dennis, Adam, and Ryan. We're going to put together the mega truck course mm -hmm. over there. Mm -hmm. And... Uh, it's going to hopefully be two tracks, uh, 
No Limit will run the off-road or the, uh, the monster truck side-by-side -side racing over there. We're going to have a dedicated mega truck course mm -hmm. uh, integrated with uh, freestyle. So depending on the uh, timing and all that stuff, we may be able to knock out some freestyle runs over yeah. in the mud pit. So it's going to get interesting. Yeah, and you know this is the first time. I mean, it's going to be competition. It's not just going to be for fun too. I mean, the the mega trucks we're gonna they're going to go at it. Right? Yeah, the guys are psyched up about it. They can't wait. Uh, it's going to be fun. I mean, with Dennis out there again, he's going to be side by side with us. You know, Adam mm -hmm. Ryan, there was a class act, and uh, you know they're about having fun. We're going to put on a race, but everybody's going to have a blast out there. Mm -hmm. And then, so we're going to transition from that. Uh, you know, we're on a little bit of a tour here. Yeah, it's going to be a little tour again. Yeah, and then you're going to head up. Uh, we're going to do the Bigfoot Open House, right? Bigfoot Open House. Uh, Early June. Yeah, Pacific, uh, Missouri. It's going to be great. Yeah, I mean, they made some announcements today. They're going to have some retro leaf spring truck competition at the mm -hmm. Bigfoot Open House. Yeah. This is for the real trucks. For the real trucks. And uh, so that's going to be different, uh, kind of going back and... We're not sure what kind of course they're going to have yet, mm -hmm. but they're saying they're going to run them side by side. Run them side by side, yep. So you're so, going to have some RC action. You're mm -hmm. going to have the 1-1 one, one action. What else so, did you ask for? Yeah, so our friends at the Trigger King, they're mm -hmm. going to be putting on the actual RC race at the Bigfoot Open House. Right. So we're going to be there. we can be able to take part of that. But then also, you know, the big, the big trucks doing the Open House there. Mm -hmm. Obviously, Bigfoot runs pretty much everything they can of mm -hmm. theirs. You know, last year they ran a race truck ran Bigfoot 8, they ran the, the 10 foot tall Bigfoot 5, they crushed cars with one, this was all in the rain. Right. And uh, this year, um, I mean, I could see if the weather looks clean, it's going to be a killer turnout out there. Yeah, it's going to be a great turnout. I missed the first two years, I know you were able to attend, you know, you could talk a little bit more about mm -hmm. that, but uh, yeah, I, I, I'm excited and I, you know, even here there's going to be a slippery snake show up to this thing too yeah uh, there's part of the promotion we got a colt cobra mm -hmm. said he's gonna be out there so uh really looking forward to to um checking that out again this year so um you know you're gonna be out in pennsylvania pennsylvania um, you're gonna do the monster cross diggers dungeon bigfoot open house right so a uh, nice little tour uh, we're gonna get out and you know just do some more monster truck racing right yeah i mean it's just Everybody's into it. Monster trucks are it right now, and we want to keep the ball rolling. Everybody's having a blast, and uh, yeah, we're going to see you at these events. We're going to be there. All right. Well, thanks, everybody, for joining us. Check out the Turbo Lover. Check out the Ruckus. He's bringing it all the time. All the time. And uh, thanks, everybody, for joining us again, and uh, we'll see you next time here after uh, the Monster Cross and Digger's Dungeon and the Bigfoot Open House. Thank you.